with the Sony Xperia 1 III making its mark by being the de facto Android smartphone for creators, Sony now takes it up a notch with the Xperia Pro I. More camera than smartphone, the Pro I's standout feature is the 1-inch XMRRS seamless image sensor Sony managed to fit in the smartphone. Or, more specifically, a 1.0 type sensor. This is the same image sensor you will find on Sony's RX107, albeit a scaled-down version of it. This isn't a smartphone that relies on AI to mimic the clarity and detail found in professional-grade cameras, it's a proper camera that naturally captures images. Although, its other camera lenses are the same ones found on the more affordable Xperia 1 III and Xperia 5 III. Plus, it doesn't even bear the same 105mm telephoto lens, as it sports a 50mm focal length instead. This begs the question, can Sony justify the $1,799 price tag despite the $1,299 Xperia 1 III already being a creator-focused smartphone? Well, yes and no, as true camera enthusiasts will enjoy the photography and new videography-focused apps and will certainly make the most out of the upgraded image sensor producing national imagery. But the Pro I's bumped up price tag only makes Sony's already niche category of smartphones a mature product, so, welcome to our new product review episode. If you are new in our channel then please subscribe our channel and press bell icon for notification of our new videos. This period Pro I with 12GB of RAM and 512GB of storage will set you back $1,799-£1,599, which is significantly more affordable than the previous $2,500 period Pro smartphone. That's good news for camera enthusiasts, but it's still quite the price jump from the company's other flagship smartphone. The dollar one comma two ninety nine slash pound one comma one ninety nine period one three. However, with the one inch Xmer RS seamless image sensor it has on board, it's worth looking at what you're paying for instead of getting Sony's RX one hundred seven camera. The compact camera will set you back dollar one comma two hundred slash one thousand one hundred fifty pounds, which is still more affordable than the Pro I. Understandably, though, seeing as customers will also get a commendable flagship Android phone with some of the best specs on the market on top of the same image sensor and face detection of sensor. Keep in mind you won't be getting the full RX107 experience, as it uses 12 megapixels of the 20 megapixels used in the camera. To put this period Pro I's price into perspective, the OnePlus 9 Pro with the same 12GB of RAM and 256GB of storage configurations is priced at £1,069.929, the Oppo Find X3 Pro costs £1,099, while the Google Pixel 6 Pro with 12GB of RAM and 256GB of storage costs £999.899. Even the iPhone 13 Pro Max with 256GB of storage and 6GB of RAM costs $1,199. At least it's on par with the $1,799 Samsung Galaxy Fold 3. When I got my hands on this Peria Pro I, I immediately thought this looks and handles exactly like this Peria 1 III, with the only real differences being the centered camera lenses and new video app. It boasts the same long footprint and brick-ish thickness as Sony's latest flagship phone, but still feels compact and looks stylish thanks to a brushed finish. The Pro I's long form factor complements the exclusive Pro camera and new video apps, along with a signature shutter button that allowed me to hold and operate the phone like a camera. I assume that's what Sony was going for, and they nailed it. You can also expect the Pro I to be rated IP6X dustproof, IPX8 water resistance, along with Corning Gorilla Glass on the front and rear. Much like the Xperia 1 III, I admire the Pro I's unusually long form factor thanks to the 21 to 9 aspect ratio, but it might not be to everyone's tastes. While I love being able to scroll through apps and watch YouTube videos and shows in landscape mode, many will find the phone's tall frame a nuisance when slipping it into a pocket or handbag. 
And, if you don't have the biggest hands in the world, reaching the top of the display can be tricky. The added width of the Pro i1 compared to its siblings also makes its comparison to a slim brick even more convincing, but that's the sacrifice you have to make in order to add a 1-inch image sensor. With dimensions of 6.5 x 2.8 x 0.35 inches and weighing 7.4 ounces, the Superior Pro i is nearly identical to the Superior 1.3 in everything but width and weight. If you're a photography fiend, this is still a considerably smaller and lighter camera alternative. Plus, it's lighter than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and is slightly bigger yet lighter than the Oppo Find X3 Pro, OnePlus 9 Pro, and Google Pixel 6 Pro. I adore the display on this period Pro i, and that's thanks to the 6.5-inch, 21-9 wide OLED display with 4K resolution it boasts. It's a smartphone made to be a good app, whether it be looking at all the high-quality imagery I just shot or watching shows with eye-popping cinematography. What's more, it offers a 120Hz refresh rate with 240Hz motion blur reduction that makes navigating through apps a delightfully smooth experience. This period Pro i offers a number of image quality settings, including the standard mode that Sony claims expand the original color gamut for brighter and more vivid color effects, along with creator mode, which offers 10-bit color of HDR specification and true reproduction of images and videos for the 4K display. This is automatically applied on specific apps, including the Videography Pro and Photography Pro app. There's also video image enhancement, which improves the visual quality of videos with sharper and clearer images. This is definitely noticeable when looking back at videos I shot, and the display really does it justice. Unfortunately, on a display this size, 4K resolution goes unnoticed. I could hardly tell the difference between applying 4K settings in X and QHD. Don't get me wrong, the Superior's display is a delight, but I bet I wouldn't find many differences between the Superior Pro i's resolution and the Superior 5.3's FHD Plus display. The hype for Attack on Titan's final season is real, so I threw on the latest episode that saw the protagonist Ren Yeager throw down against an armada of soldiers and other titans. I was swept up in the beautifully animated destruction of buildings, Fox flying as titans hit each other, and the inevitable bloodshed of bodies gruesomely being ripped to pieces. I was getting a small-scale cinematic experience in my hand. To make use of the Pro i's 21 to 9 aspect ratio, I threw on Django Unchained and couldn't get enough of Jamie Foxx's gunslinging prowess. Wide angle shots are extremely immersive, and colors popped in the background, particularly when Django became the fastest gun in the south amidst the mountains blanketed in snow. I also easily adjusted the brightness level to make the screen shine bright, seeing as the automatic adjustments would often dim the display to an uncomfortable level. I expected nothing less from this period pro I in the audio department, seeing how it packs in the Superior One 3's high-res wireless with LDAC codec on board and 360-degree spatial audio. As I don't own Sony's headphones to truly test this out, such as the amazing WF-1000XM4 earbuds and WH-1000XM4 headphones, check out our review of the Superior 5.3 to find out how well they function. As for the full-stage stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos support placed on either end of the phone, I experienced the same unfortunate lack of prominent bass that gives rhythmic music the oomph it needs. Sporting an identical sound setup as the Superior 1.3, this was to be expected. I did, however, have a better experience listening to different tunes. Any Attack on Titan fan will know that if I already mentioned the final season, I would have to talk about the opening theme, The Rumbling by Sim. This orchestra of metal ramps the hype and terror to expect in the final few episodes, mixing the chance of rumbling is coming with deep roars from the vocalist and heavy guitar riffs. The speakers captured the highs of the chorus and crush of instruments without obstructing one another, although the lack of bass still dampened the experience. Since the Pro I is also made for entertainment, I listened to the soundtrack of one of my personal favorite games of 2021, Inscription. More specifically, the Uberbot-activated tune. 
asked while the speakers hit all the glitchy, atmospheric notes of the track. It didn't make me bop the same way as other speakers would, seeing as the punchy bass is insufficient. The speakers did capture the creepy, high-pitched whistles of Rushy's theme without sounding tinny. I got a kick out of the gimmicky dynamic vibration feature. This allows this period pro eyes haptics to deliver physical feedback to match what is being played, whether it be music or media. I didn't take much notice while listening to music, and preferred it to be switched off when placing it down on a table, but I felt a sense of immersion when watching films or TV shows. The Sony's Period Pro I offers a powerful Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chip with 5G connectivity, along with 12GB of RAM and 512GB for storage. The phone comes with Android 11, which is disappointing to see considering Android 12 is now out in the wild. I put this Period 1 3 through the ringer, so it's only fair I do the same with the Pro I. Unsurprisingly, Having up to 70 tabs open in Google Chrome while watching a Netflix show with multiple apps in the background worked like a breeze, and meant I could easily switch to recently opened apps and jump right back in with what I was doing. When putting it to the test on Geekbench, this period pro I delivered a multi-core score of 3395. This, disappointingly, doesn't match up with a less expensive Superior 1 3, but it still beats a majority of its competition such as the Find X3 Pro, Pixel 6 Pro and Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. It nearly rivals the gaming-focused Asus ROG Phone 5 and a 14 Bionic-powered iPhone 12 Pro, but can't match the undisputed king, the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Strangely, this also means it still couldn't beat the Superior 5 3. As for the Freedmark Wildlife Unlimited test, however, the Speria Pro I clocked an impressive 5,899, with an average frame rate of 35.3 FPS. This is slightly better than the Speria 1 3, and on a par with the Speria 5 3's 35 FPS. All in all, if you're looking to game and get work done, the Pro I has the power to boot. Featuring the same 4,500 mAh battery capacity and charging capabilities as the Superior 1 3, the Superior Pro I does a great job at offering all-day battery life. However, for a phone made for professional photographers and cinematographers, it can stumble when keeping up with the heavy-duty work when processing or editing images or video. I squeezed out two days worth of battery life with light usage, and went through a whole day with 20% of charge left with moderate usage. This goes to show this period Pro I has the chops to function as a reliable smartphone for most users. But it isn't targeted at them, it's a phone made to be used as a camera alternative. When using both the exclusive Photography Pro and Videography Pro apps on my hour-long walk, I found the battery dropped from 90% to 69% once I had returned. This is similar to what I experienced using the Xperia 1 3. While dropping 20% with an hour of on and off usage is more than enough for me, professionals that need to use the phone for shoots that can last anywhere around 3 hours or more will find the battery drop significantly. Luckily, a quick charge will sort out that problem. Thanks to the 30 watts charging that comes in the box, this period Pro I features wicked fast charging. I charged the phone from 0% to 50% in around 25 minutes. This is an essential feature if you're using the Pro I over long periods, and need a quick fold of juice to get that last shot. As Sony puts it, the camera features a large one and Chixmer RS seamless image sensor with a face detection of sensor, inspired by Sony's RX107. This allows for less noise in low light settings, clear details and natural bokeh effects. So natural, in fact, that acclaimed British filmmaker Philip Bloom couldn't get enough of the camera's capabilities. For example, instead of the digitally grainy or blurred look you get when using typical smartphone cameras, Everything appears naturally swish. Bloom was most impressed by the bokeh effect, stating that it looks like it's out of focus, as it should when using a proper camera. The main sensor also features ice optics that's been specifically made for the Superior Pro I. 
This features the dual aperture of f2.0, 4.0, so users can change the depth of field on the fly. Plus, the image sensor has a 2.4 mu in pixel pitch, which is a significant step up from the Google Pixel 6's 1.2 micrometers pixel width. As for the three lenses on the phone, expect a 16mm ultra-wide, 24mm wide, and 50mm telephoto lens standard, along with a 3D IDOF sensor that Sony claims can instantly calculate the distance between the camera and a subject. All feature 12MP resolution, while the front-facing camera is an 8MP shooter with an f2.0 aperture. This is where the cameras don't match the price point, as these lenses will capture similar shots as more affordable smartphones on the market. Don't get me wrong, the Superior Pro I can take mesmerizing atmospheric shots, but the true breadwinner in the 1-inch sensor. The Sony Superior Pro I runs Android 11 and has no blowaway except for a link to a free 3-month title subscription for lossless audio streaming. When starting up the Superior Pro I, the phone even asks whether I wanted to download apps that are considered bloatware, including Booking.com and the other usual suspects. With Android 12 now out in the wild, the Superior loses out on one major update. It's been over a year since Android 11 came out, and the Superior Pro I released in December 2021. Still, Sony's Superior UI overlays are nearly identical to the Android stock OS with the bonus of adapting the screen and apps to the taller display. Plus, there's easy access to the multi-window switch that splits the screen between two apps and the side sense bar for additional control. As you can expect from a Sony phone, there are some PlayStation features. This includes PS Remote Play, DualShock 4 controller compatibility and the Game Enhancer feature. Sony does stumble with software update support, though. There is no official policy on how long the company will support this period pro i, and history suggests you'll only get two years of updates. This is disappointing, as you can get better software support from cheaper phones. Namely, the iPhone 13. Thanks for watching this video. If you think this video is useful, then please give a like in this video and share with others. Bye for now.